Let's see what's on the radio. And the Lord spoke to you, brother? Oh, He did. He did. He told me, set aside worldly things and give it all away and follow Him. Great. Can I have your watch? What? 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 Leather, rubber, hemp, grease, dirt. Yes, 31 flavors of Carmel ice cream. Lendini's first opus in G sharp. This was followed by Lendini's second opus in G sharp. Then Mendini's third opus in G sharp. Then they all realized it was just the same damn opus in the day. But the space program is so expensive, all that money spent in space, while people starve and taxpayers ask, will this make my life better? Uh, yes. Our work will make each person's life 4% happier. <laughs> Uh, plus, if we can get another billion dollars funding, we can promise that satisfaction will almost double and negative bad vibes could be eliminated in our lifetime. Okay. Throw open your windows, lean out into the street, and shout, I'm mad as hell! I'm not gonna take it anymore! Then go back inside, shift in your TV set, turn on your radio! Frantic Times, number 76. And the earth was chaos. And there was evil upon the face of the land, and all manner of monsters and demons howled piteously amidst the scorched ruins. And that, Mr. President, sums up our report on the impact of acid rain. Good, good, wonderful, wonderful. Danger lurks. When terror stalks. When Sally pouts. People call for just one man. Mr. Canoehead. Or his brother Ted. I'm busy. Mr. Canoehead. A man who had a canoe welded to his head by a flash of lightning as he portaged through Algonquin Park. When last we met Mr. Canoehead, an orphanage had been stolen by the wicked underground mole monks. And Mr. Canoehead had gone underground to retrieve the orphanage and rescue sister superstructure. It's implausible, really. Gee, it's dark in here. I had better switch on my running light. Oh, Mr. Canoehead, you're here. Oh, I'm sister, saved. when you fell down that pit, I just naturally assumed you were dead and immediately forgot you ever existed. Well, but when I jumped, my habit all flopped out and I floated down to the bottom of the pit. Talk uh, about a stroke of completely unbelievable luck. Uh-huh. Yeah. But no time for this kind of talk. We've got to go after the mole monks. May Bob Barker go with us. Don't you mean God? No, Sister Clara won a Porsche on the price is right, so we go with whoever delivers. Follow me, sister. We'll get to the bottom of this before you can say Jack Spratt. those people in the shadows. Surround them, my boy, monks. So you're the mole monks. I am Marvin, the star-nosed mole monk. And there's the orphanage you stole behind you. Very observant, Mr. Canoehead. Why? Why would you take away the only home that a bunch of dinky little kids have? We didn't want the orphanage, you fool. We wanted the basement. A basement? (laughs) Of course. So you could make wine, just like surface monks who make wine in the basement of their monasteries. Well, 
You'll never get away with this. Get him, my monks! <laughs> On the other hand, maybe you will. <laughs> will Mr. Canoehead get out of this tight spot? Or will Mr. Canoehead get to like this tight spot? Find out on the next episode of Mr. Canoehead. Good evening. Welcome to Those Fascinating People. I'm Cliff Bluffcliff, and my guest today is a man who has been hanging upside down for most of his adult life, Mr. Bill Kent. Hello, Bill. Yeah, hello. Okay. Well, hanging upside down for most of your adult life, that's certainly pretty darn fascinating. What? Hanging upside down. Who is? You are. I am? And you've been hanging upside down for how many years now? I thought we agreed that I lived in a pencil case. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're hanging upside down. Hanging up. Oh. So, you must get pretty dizzy with all that blood constantly rushing to your head. No. Why, should I? Because you're hanging upside down. No, no, I'm not. We, we agree. We agree. I thought it was a pencil. No, no. Upside down. All right, okay, sure, yeah, right, right, yeah. Good. And exactly how long have you been hanging upside down? Whatever you say. <laughs> 20 years. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. Sure. That's pretty darn fascinating. That's a load. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must be difficult for you hanging upside down to be a brain surgeon. I'm a janitor. Oh, oh. I, so you moonlight, Bill. My name's Larry. Oh. I gotta sweep up, Mr. Bluffcliff. I gotta go back into Studio 8 and sweep it, okay? I gotta go. Well, that's all the time we have left for today. Well, you got lots of time. You just don't got any guests for your stupid show. Good night. What's uh, a five-letter word for a uh, woman? What's it start with? Uh, B. <laughs> Broad. Right, right, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, then, okay, down from B are uh, four letters of uh, stuff to keep you alive. Uh, beer. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, six letters starting with S. Um, Islamic religion. Stupid. Right. Uh, four letters, left-wing politician. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, you're really good at this. Yeah, well, I always do the crosswords in the sun, you know. <laughs> She was, Mr. Dale. We'll all miss her. If you need anything? Yes, I know. I'll, I'll call. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Hey, Randy. Hi. Sorry to hear the bad news, ma'am. Yeah, it, it, it was a bit of a shock, Paige. Yeah, well, my thoughts are with you, Randy. Thanks. Thanks. She was a, a real great lady. Say, is there a Diet Coke machine in here? What? But I, 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 I... Oh, never mind. I'll stop on the highway later. Well, I'm double parked, and I just wanted to, you know, pay my last respects and all. Yeah, well, thanks. Okay. It's no problem. The least I could do. Yeah, you're right there. What? Well, I mean, this is the least you could do, you know. I mean, stopping and saying hi and then leaving. I mean, anything else, anything less would have been, you know, nothing. Well, I couldn't just do nothing, Randy. Came pretty damn close, in my opinion. Hey. Are you okay, man? Oh, sure. Hey. Never been better. 
My mom's dead. I've spent two days telling friends and relatives it's okay. Well, what do you want me to do? Come on, communicate with me. What, flowers? I could send flowers. Yeah, yeah, sure. Send flowers. There's a shop on your way to the cottage. Hey. Okay. Hey, see, it's no problem. Listen, man, if you can get away, everyone's coming up to my cottage for the weekend. No, Paige. Not everyone. Some people have the sensitivity to stay in town and pay their last respects at the funeral. I'd be there, but I got guests invited. I got a case of yeah, beer sure, in the fine. van. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. Look, Randy, give me a break, man. What do you want? I stopped in to give you my support. Your support? Your support? Wearing, wearing, wearing short shorts, sunglasses, and a halter top that says, windsurfers do it standing up? <laughs> Look at you already got the suntan lotion on. Well, my arm gets a tan on the road. Fine, fine, fine. Go off to your party. The cottage. Look, what do you want me to do, Randy? At least help pay for this thing. She was your mother, too. <laughs> Today, many teenage boys are computer enthusiasts, and electronics and programming take up all their time. Well, they're still boys, and they'll always do boy things. Now there's a magazine that caters to their two biggest interests. It's Breasts and Bites magazine. Now computer hackers can pour over the latest specs on CPM-based 16-bit micros and nude women with huge gazongas. The latest in software and soft porn for the boy who doesn't have the time or inclination to date girls. Breasts and Bites features VDTNA, input and output, big memories, floppy disks, and lots of computers, too. This month's issue previews the Vectron Research IBM compatible portable and honey bazooms. These girls are for real. The only silicon is in the chips. <laughs> Miss Boom Boom O'Toole asks, is 16K RAM enough? Cherry Bomb plays with an apple, and Helen shows us her modem. <laughs> Breasts and bites, for man cannot live by joystick alone. <laughs> When things go awry. When things go better with Coca-Cola. People call for one man. Mr. Canoehead. Not his brother, Ted. I think that's Mr. Canoehead. Struck by lightning while he was portaging his aluminum canoe. Now he has turned to fighting crime. When last we saw him, he was battling the wicked mole monks because they'd stolen an entire orphanage so they could use its basement to make wine in. We couldn't follow the story either. No. I already got one. We're outnumbered, Mr. Canoehead. So, Mr. Canoehead and Sister Superstructure. Now we have you both. Soon we will be making wine in the basement of your orphanage and we'll put all the other winemaking monasteries out of business. You'll never get away with this, Marvin the Mole Monk. Why do you say that, Canoehead? Because you have no grapes to make wine with. Grapes? <laughs> um, can I get some support here, please? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Canoehead, we aren't going to use grapes. We're going to use grubs. People won't drink grub wine. They drink BC wine. Good point. Please stop then, Mr. Canoehead. The orphans leave the orphanage more than these mole monks do. All right, Sister Superstructure. I'll stop them. How are you going to do that when we've got you strapped down under this table, bauxite brain? <laughs> bauxite brain? Ooh, well, I might be tied down, but my canoe head is still hanging over the edge, and I can spin it really fast like a big giant type fan. What? Oh, 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 oh no, stop! Now I 
demand you return the orphanage to its hole in the ground. We promise, we promise. Uh, Bob Barker is our maker. Oh, what did you win? I got some furniture and a great ski boat. <laughs> oh, Mr. Canoehead, my hero. Well, thank you, doll feet. <laughs> Paddles up, Canoehead. She's a nun. Thorn. <laughs> And so ends another exciting episode of Mr. Canoehead. Next week, Mr. Canoehead falls in love with a glass bottom boat. Morning, Mr. Rick. Oh, hey, Lou. How's business? Up and down, in and out, over and under. How's by you? Oh, I can't complain. Got the day's early edition? I saved the last copy for you, Mr. Rick. Oh, thanks a lot. And a uh, copy of McLean's. McLean, sure thing. That's uh, 250 altogether. Right. Here you go. Thanks a lot. See you, Lou. I love you. What? I'm sorry. I had to say it. Something wrong, Lou? No, I just love you. But what are you talking about, Lou? I don't know, Mr. Rick. It's love. It's, it's the real thing. You're talking crazy, Lou. Maybe love is crazy, Mr. Rick. I don't know. <laughs> Have you felt like this for long, Lou, or did the bus fumes just get you now? <laughs> You've you always been my best customer, Mr. Rick. But this aching in my heart just came suddenly. When when I see you, a song fills my soul, you know? It's, it's not right, Lou. I, you can see that, can't you? I can't see nothing but my own heart. Cut it out, Lou. I can't. It's bigger than the both of us. Lou, I'm a businessman. You're a paper vendor. We come from different worlds. You're hiding behind words, Mr. Rick. I love you, plain as that. Lou, I understand. You know, you're 20 years older than me, and yet in so many ways you're just a child. I know it may seem like the end of the world now, but in a few years, you'll thank me for picking up my paper and magazine and moving on. Oh, but, but Mr. Rick... No buts, Lou. Goodbye. You're, you're changed, Mr. Rick. Keep it, Lou. To help you remember. Oh. Morning, Rick. Oh, hi, Jack. Early for work. I saw how you handled that thing with Lou back there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I respect you for letting him down like that. Oh, it was a tricky situation. I, uh, admire you, uh, a lot for it. Well, was... <laughs> there was nothing. I love you. <laughs> Look, Jack, I've got a busy day ahead of me. I don't... Uh, excuse me, could you direct me to... I love you. I love you. Hands off, lady. Oh, uh, Rick is fine. You. Rick is fine. Right. Right. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Take, if you will, the case of Richard Rick. At nine o'clock on Monday morning, for no reason, he became the world's most lovable man. Everyone everywhere in the world, suddenly and without warning, went all gooey for Mr. Rick. In New York. So, mister, you want to buy a coke? Yeah. I thought they would reach it, Rick, look. <gasps> mister Rick, oi, they. But I wouldn't give to be 40 years younger, blonde, female, and stark out the year. In Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> but the house recognizes Mr. Broadbent. Madam Speaker. When is this government going to build a big love monument to Mr. Rick? Here, 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 here. Huh? Here, here, here. Mr. Broadbent, for once, I think all three parties can agree, we are going to build a monument to Mr. Rick. Here, here, here. Right in Westmount. No, in Oshawa. In New Penlon. No, in Calgary. My house. In my house. Yeah, yeah. And then, just as mysteriously as it all began, it all ended. Hi, Luke. Got a paper? Sure. Saved you the late edition, Mr. Rick. Oh, good. Let's see. Marie Osmond will not wed Mr. Rick. Mr. Rick is no longer king of Russia. War in Mideast. Well, that's back to normal. Quite a day for you, Mr. Rick. Yeah, well, I'm just glad it's over, really. Well, oh, here's, the, here's your quarter. And here's your change from this morning. Oh, yeah. You were right. Well... Good night, Lou. Mr. Rick? What, Lou? I like you. Fine, Lou. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. It's Frantic Time Song.
long contest. After going through the thousands of entries that should have poured in, we have picked a winner. Well, one that's not as bad as the losers. We found a letter. It was really quite exciting. It's going to a lady who is north of Fort McMurray, not Fred McMurray, <laughs> Fort McMurray in Alberta. She wrote us a letter. She's a fire spotter up on the tower. And since there were no fires out there, she decided to write us a letter. So Carol Wollner, this one's for you. The city is empty, lonely, and gray. I long for the wilderness just for a day. I'd flee to Alberta if only I could To someone who's waiting up north in the woods A cow owner guards the forest by the hour From her lookout in the Gordon Lake Tower She's watching for fire because she's a spy She'll see my heart smoking if it get much harder. Carol Warner knows where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Does she know she's the wind that bends my heart's desire? Carol Warner is the fourth in a family of eight. <laughs> It's amazing, so am I, oh my God, it must be fate. A carol warner likes to Sunday in the nude, but those helicopter pilots can be crude when they bug by her tower. Carol runs for cover, cause she says that's right for Jim, who is her lover. When Jim's away, then I will quickly hurry, I will fly a walking crawl to Fort McMurray when her mail and food are flowing into her station I'll tag along disguised as secret rations Carol Warner you've got me in your power you have got me in your power <laughs> I'd love to come and sweep you off your tower sweep you off your tower I'd water bomb your heart all through the night all through the night but for one thing i'm a terrified of a high carol warner it seems our love's gone sour cause i'll never have the nerve to climb the tower carol warner i'll wait here till you come down i'll burn for you from afar here on the ground Conceived, written, and performed by the Frantic Stan Reddick and Paul Shadow, Rick Green, and Peter Wong. Special cast is Meg Brockman. Sound effects by Kathy Perry. Technical production, Brian Dawes and Don Patterson. Production assistant was Deborah Coffin. Frantic Times was taped in the beautiful Blue Orchid Room here at the beautiful Ontario College of Art. Good night, David Milligan. It's been a treat. So long, everybody. Oh!